William Bush, 41 years on death row. He is the longest serving death row inmate in Alabama, awaiting his execution since 1982. He was sentenced for murdering Montgomery convenience store clerk Larry Dominguez in 1981 during a robbery. He is now 73 years old. Harry Nix, 39 years on death row. He was convicted in 1984 for the murder of Robert Black during a shop robbery in 1983. He is 72 years old. Earl Jerome McGahey, 37 years on death row. He was convicted for entering a nursing school classroom in September 1985 and murdering his ex-wife and another female student. He is 66 years old. Harvey Lee Windsor, 33 years on death row. He received the death penalty for robbing and shooting Randall Pepper at a gas station in 1989. He is 60 years old today. David Freeman, 33 years on death row. He was convicted on October 20, 1989 for murdering 17-year-old Mary Gordon and for essaying then murdering her mother as well. He is 54 years old. Michael Anthony Sockwell, 33 years on death row. He was convicted of shooting and murdering Montgomery County Deputy Sheriff Isaiah Harris. The crime happened in 1988 and the wife of the victim was actually a co-defendant. Sockwell is now 61 years old. Gregory Hunt, 33 years on death row. He got the death penalty for essaying and beating his ex-girlfriend Karen Lane. He is 63 years old. Charles Randall Stewart, 33 years on death row. He was convicted in 1990 for shooting and killing his ex-wife in front of their six-year-old son. He is 70 years old. Mark Allen Jenkins, 32 years on death row. Tammy Hoagland, a restaurant employee from Birmingham, was last seen there on April 18, 1989, and Jenkins was found guilty of her murder. Her body was discovered next to a highway. Jenkins, who has an IQ of 76, is mentally impaired and should not be executed, according to his attorneys. He is 56 years old. Charles Lee Burton, 31 years on death row. Along with another man, he was convicted of murdering Doug Battle during a robbery that they committed in 1991. He is now 68 years old. Jeffrey Day Reber, 31 years on death row. He was convicted of killing Glenda Phillips in 1990 at the convenience store. He is now 56 years old. Wayne Holman Travis, 30 years on death row. He was convicted for the murder of Clarine Haskew, a 69-year-old widow, in her home during a burglary. His co-defendant, Stephen Hall, initially got the same sentence, but later he was resentenced to life in prison. Travis is now 54 years old. Michael Shannon Taylor, 30 years on death row. Taylor was just 19 years old when he murdered Ernest and Lucille Moore, an elderly couple for which he occasionally mowed the lawn. He wanted to steal their money and car. Taylor is now 52 years old. Mitchell Willoughby, 40 years on death row. For his role in the January 13, 1983 execution-style killings of Jacqueline Green, Joe Norman, and Joey Durham in an apartment in Lexington, Kentucky, Willoughby was given a death sentence in Fayette County on September 15, 1983. In Jessamine County, Kentucky, Willoughby and his accomplice, Leif Halverson, tried to dispose of their victims' remains by throwing them from the Brooklyn Bridge. Halverson received a death sentence because of the killings as well. Carol Jean White, 44 years on death row. On the evening of February 12, 1979, White and two accomplices broke into a business owned by an old woman named Lula Gross, as well as two elderly men named Charles Gross and Sam Cheney in Haddix, Kentucky. The three shopkeepers were fatally bludgeoned by White and his accomplices. They stole a firearm, coins, and a billfold with $7,000. The victims were buried in body bags because of how viciously they were beaten to death. The arrest of Carol Jean White occurred on July 27, 1979. On March 29, 1980, in Powell County, he was found guilty of the murders and given the death penalty. 37 years on death row. Thompson was serving out his life term in Lyon County for a murder for hire that he had committed in Pike County. Following his report for work detail in 1986, Thompson killed prison guard Fred Cash by striking him in the head 12 times with a hammer. After dragging Cash's body to a neighboring barn, Thompson stole the knife, keys, and wallet belonging to the guard. He drove to a bus stop after robbing a prison van. While traveling to Indiana, he was detained by the police. In October 1986, Thompson was found guilty and given the death penalty. Victor Taylor 
38 years on death row. Taylor abducted, robbed, bound, gagged, and killed two high school students, Scott Nelson and Richard Stevenson, on September 29, 1984. The two had become disoriented while traveling to a football game in Louisville, Kentucky. Before killing one of the victims, Taylor essayed him. He admitted to killing the boys to four separate people. He was in possession of the victim's personal belongings. October 4, 1984 saw his arrest, and on May 23, 1986, he was given the death penalty. David Lee Sanders, 36 years on death row. When Sanders was robbing a Madison County grocery store in 1987, he shot Jim Brandenburg and Wayne Hatch in the back of the head. One victim died quite quickly. Two days later, the other victim also passed away. Sanders admitted to the deaths and the attempted murder of a different supermarket clerk one month prior, who escaped with a gunshot wound to the head. Sanders received a death sentence on June 5, 1987. Brian Moore, 39 years on death row. 77-year-old Virgil Harris begged for his life in 1979 and Brian Moore took advantage of him and had him executed in Jefferson County. Harris was on his way to commemorate his 77th birthday alongside his children. In a grocery store parking lot, Moore pulled a revolver on Harris as he made his way back to his car. Moore took control of the vehicle and dumped the victim many miles away down an embankment. Subsequently, he fired a bullet at Harris at close range, striking him in the upper part of his head, beneath his right eye, inside his right ear, and behind his right ear. A few hours later, Moore came back to take a watch from his victim. He received a death sentence on November 29, 1984. David Matthews, 41 years on death row. On November 11, 1982, Matthews was given the death penalty in Jefferson County for the savage killings of his mother-in-law, Magdalene Cruz, and his estranged wife, Mary Matthews. The killings happened on June 29, 1981, in Louisville, Kentucky. Matthews broke into his wife's house. He was found guilty on October 8, 1982, after his trial. Benny Hodge, 37 years on death row. On June 20, 1986, Hodge was found guilty of Tammy Aker's murder in Letcher County and given the death penalty. On August 8, 1985, Hodge and his accomplice Roger Epperson broke into Dr. Roscoe Acker's house in Fleming Neon, Kentucky. During a robbery that brought them $1.9 million in cash, weapons, and jewelry, they had Dr. Acker strangled with an electrical cord and his daughter Tammy stabbed 12 times with a butcher knife. The butcher knife driven through her chest was buried in the floor. On November 22, 1996, Hodge was also given a second death sentence for the June 16, 1985 murder and robbery of Bessie and Edwin Morris in their Greyhawk, Kentucky home. The victims had their feet and hands bound behind them when they were discovered. After being shot twice in the back, Bessie Morris passed away from her injuries. Edwin Morris had two blunt force head injuries, a gunshot wound to the head, and breathing obstruction from a ligature gag. Roger Epperson, who took part in the killings, was also given a second death sentence. Randy Height, 30 years on death row. Height made his getaway from the Johnson County Jail on August 18, 1985, accompanied by his girlfriend and another male prisoner. Height was pending trial in three jurisdictions at the time. He had been incarcerated in Kentucky, Virginia, and Ohio for all but two of his 15 years of adult life. Following his breakout, Height stole multiple vehicles and firearms. He also fired at a Kentucky State Police Trooper and was involved in a gunfight that resulted in the death of a police officer. Patricia Vance and David Omer, a young couple, were sitting in their car on August 22, 1985, when Height murdered them. He fired shots into Omer's back of the head, shoulder, chest, and face. He shot Vance through the eye, in the back of the skull, the temple, and the shoulder. Not one of the victims lived. Hyde was given a death sentence on March 22, 1994, for the killings. Robert Foley, 30 years on death row. In his own house in Laurel County, Kentucky, Robert Foley shot and killed brothers Rodney and Lynn Vaughn in 1991. There were five children and ten additional adults there when the murders occurred. The men had left their handguns in a kitchen cabinet, but Foley retained his. He had a colt hidden beneath his shirt. A brawl broke out between Foley and Rodney Vaughn while the men were drinking. After forcing Rodney to the ground, Foley took out his gun and fired six shots at him. 
Vaughn died from multiple gunshot wounds to his body and left arm. Len Vaughn was then fatally shot by Foley in the back of the head. Two days after Foley and his three collaborators disposed of the brothers' bodies in a local creek, they were found. Foley faced a capital murder charge. He was found guilty by a jury and given the death penalty on September 2, 1993. In 1994, Foley was found guilty of killing Kim Bowerstock, Jerry McMillan, Calvin Reynolds, and Lillian Contino in 1989. The four victims were from Ohio and they had just arrived in town when Foley came to the conclusion that Bowerstock had confirmed to selling drugs to his parole officer, he became enraged. After locating Bowerstock, Foley attacked her. He produced his revolver as Reynolds arrived to save her. He shot Reynolds, then turned to aim at McMillan, Contino, and Bowerstock. Then he went back to Bowerstock and shot her in the back of the head once more. Not one of the four made it. After depriving his victims of all possessions, Foley covered their bodies with cement and lime and submerged them into a septic tank. It took two years for the bodies to be discovered. Roger Epperson, 37 years on death row. On June 20, 1986, Epperson was found guilty of Tammy Acre's murder in Letcher County and given the death penalty. Dr. Roscoe Acker of Fleming Neon, Kentucky, was home when Epperson and his accomplice, Benny Hodge, broke in on the evening of August 8, 1985. After stabbing Dr. Acker's daughter, Tammy, 12 times with a butcher knife and strangling him until he passed out, they stole money, jewels, and firearms from the house. When Tammy Aker was discovered dead, a butcher knife was embedded in the floor and had pierced her chest. Epperson was taken into custody on August 15, 1985 in Florida. For his involvement in the June 16, 1985 killings of Bessie and Edwin Morris in their Greyhawk, Kentucky home, he was given a second death sentence. Ralph Bays, 30 years on death row. On February 4, 1994, Bays was found guilty in Rowan County of killing two police officers and given the death penalty. In response to unfulfilled Ohio warrants, Deputy Arthur Briscoe visited Bays' residence on January 30, 1992. Along with him was Sheriff Steve Bennett. Bays used an assault rifle to shoot both of them. Each police officer was shot three times in the back, according to the prosecutor's office. As the officers attempted to crawl away, they were shot in the back of the head and executed. Bays was taken into custody in Estill County that same day. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. Fred Singleton, 40 years on death row. Elizabeth C. Lominick, 73 years old, was essayed by Singleton after he broke into her house, killed her and stole her belongings. The widow's body was discovered strangled with a bedsheet in the bedroom of her Newberry County home on September 9, 1982, by two sisters and a niece. Singleton had roughly $100 belonging to the victim in his pockets when he was apprehended in Georgetown County, along with gold and diamond jewelry. The victim's vehicle was also located. Singleton's fingerprints were discovered on the car and the screen of Mrs. Lominick's bathroom window. James William Wilson 34 years on death row. He killed two children and wounded nine other people during an elementary school shooting spree. Wilson, who was 20 years old at the time, was the gunman in the 1988 Oakland Elementary School shooting. Wilson acknowledged bringing a loaded gun into the school. Tequila Thomas and Shaquilla Bradley, two eight-year-olds, were killed when he opened fire in a third-grade classroom after reloading his gun in a lavatory. During the brawl, seven other students and two teachers were hurt. Wilson appeared to target kids who shouted in terror, according to witnesses. Mitchell Carlton Sims, 34 years on death row. Sims became enraged with the national chain of Domino's pizza shops in a strange and persistent way. The hatred might have sprung from his own job with the chain, which he had left in the autumn of 1985. On December 3, 1985, Sims broke into the Domino's restaurant in Hanahan, South Carolina, where he had just finished employment. He tortured both of the employees before shooting them both to death. One victim was instantly murdered, while the other, who had been shot four times, made it to a police station and identified Sims as the shooter before passing out. When his second victim passed away a week later, Sims and his girlfriend, Ruby Paget were already in Glendale, California, plotting their next crime. 
Sims had the Domino's pizza delivered to his motel room on December 10th. Delivery man John Harrington arrived. He was undressed, choked with a washcloth, and drowned in the tub. Sims went to the restaurant, and he put on the dead man's uniform, stole from its safe, and left two employees chained in the freezer, unable to move and having to stand on tiptoe to keep them from hanging themselves. By December 11, Sims and Paget were holed up in Las Vegas when he checked into a budget motel under the name of Jeff Richardson. After Harrington's stolen truck was found in a casino parking lot on December 21st, both suspects were taken into custody on Christmas morning as a result of widespread media coverage. Emmanuel Little John, 31 years on death row. Little John and Glenn Bethany robbed the Root and Scott in Oklahoma City while they were both 20 years old. Kenneth Mears, a 31-year-old victim of the heist, was slain as he approached the perpetrators with a broom. Little John received a death sentence, while Bethany received a life sentence in jail. Little John acknowledges taking part in the heist, but claims not to have fired the fatal shot that struck Mears. Little John had requested the Supreme Court to review whether his death sentence was lawful, since the jury had not been informed that his brain damage from his mother's extreme drug and alcohol misuse during his pregnancy could have been a possible explanation for his criminal behavior. Richard Norman Rogem, 39 years on death row. Leila Dawn Cummings, his former stepdaughter, was seven years old when Richard Rogem essayed, abducted, and killed her. Leila was taken from the apartment she shared with her mother Mindy Cummings and her brother Jason Cummings between 10 p.m. on July 6th and 1.15 a.m. on July 7th. When Rick Quimby, who worked at a motel across the street, went to check on the kids, he discovered Leila was missing and informed Mindy at work. When Jason's mother left for work, he went to sleep, but when he heard the disturbance, he woke up. He said in court that he didn't hear any cries or struggle, but did saw Rick. Jason told his father, Don Cummings, in court that he believed Layla was with Rick, but he did not see or hear anything. Don Cummings is Layla and Jason's father. On July 7, a farmer discovered Layla's body in a field. She was killed by neck stab wounds. She had also suffered a stab wound to her private areas. Blood had drenched the ground two to three inches beneath her neck and chest, as well as the area around the crotch of her nightgown. The skin on her buttocks was torn and scratched with nails. Although she had suffered blunt force injuries in her private areas, no genetic material was discovered in her body. The majority of the information linking Rogem to the crime was circumstantial. He recently divorced Mindy and made an effort to patch things up. He was aware of her work schedule and the malfunctioning apartment door lock. Near the flat, a plastic cup with his fingerprints on it was discovered. His beer had been put in a comparable cup and he had left a bar between 11.50 and 12.20. Rogem contacted his workplace at 1.14 a.m. and asked the dispatcher to record the call at 12.35 a.m. Later on, he asked that the call be recorded at the proper time. The outside packaging of a condom was discovered by the police in Leila's nightgowns folds. An order form packed with that brand of condoms was also found at the crime site. Police discovered the condom packet and the used condom containing genetic material when they investigated Rogem's room. This made up the entirety of a condom package. The washroom at the bar where Rogem had been featured a dispenser selling this generic brand of condoms. Just before leaving the bar, he had gone to the bathroom. The two rear tires and one front tire of Rogem's car were identified by tire track impressions close to the body. The other front tire's track impressions did not match the one on Rogem's vehicle. However, the state provided evidence that Rogem had changed that tire on July 7 in the morning. The other tires were 15-inch non-radials, whereas that one was a 14-inch radial. Rogem had requested that a co-worker inform the police that he and another employee had changed Rogem's tire following a blowout. The police may have a tire they used to put me in jail, Rogem warned the co-worker, and if you don't tell them you changed the tire, it'll be that punishment and two lives instead of one. The co-worker refused to lie. Rogem claimed to have owned the car the entire time and that it had been involved in a homicide, according to a different co-worker. Alfred Brian Mitchell 31 years on death row. Elaine Marie Scott was essayed and killed by Alfred Mitchell, who 
who had just been let out of a state reform school. Mitchell had previously been found guilty of essay. Elaine Marie Scott, who was 21 at the time, was killed by a wooden coat tree on January 7, 1991, with such force that her parents were told not to view her body. Scott was a part-time counselor for poor children at Oklahoma City's Pilot Recreation Community Center when the attack occurred. At the time, Mitchell was just 18 years old. In addition to fibers from his jacket lodged in her fingernails, investigators discovered Mitchell's blood on Scott's body. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.